Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chaim Yacobi. I'm the program leader of the Health in Urban Development Master Program. And this week we are uh, having our overseas uh, practice engagement with a wonderful group of partners in Nicosia. And as part of this week, we are uh, very thrilled to host uh, Dr. Hussein Sadri. Hussein is an architect, educator, researcher, focusing on, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Hussein, on the relationship between social, ecological, and I would say cultural and political aspects of planning. Um, Hussein will have his presentation and then you will all be able to uh, drop a, a line with a question or a comment to the Q&A box. Uh, if you want to share any link or anything else, please use the chat function. Um, so Hussein, the floor is yours. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, Haim and uh, Anut, for uh, your very kind uh, invitation. Uh, and I would like also to welcome all the audiences and thank them that they uh, joined and participate. I hope uh, we can have a good discussion uh, in this session. Yeah, just trying to... <laughs> now I have the same problem. I cannot find the... Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, the topic of the talk, as uh, you've seen in the announcement, it's deep planning in Cyprus, and it's a kind of uh, long project that we are working uh, in the urban design studio with uh, my partners and I'm together and it is ongoing project so it's not a finished one but basically uh, the aim of the project and the main issues that we are trying to address in this project is uh, looking at uh, the island in a way that uh, we uh, recognize the coexistence and co-evolution of the island and its inhabitants as a, as a main fact. So we accept that uh, any, any piece of land and spe especially islands, because they are more kind of controlled ecosystems, they evolve with the inhabitants together. So there is a strong relation between all the inhabitants, uh, between them and among them, and between them and the land and the, the piece of the land and also the sea that they are living on it. And then the second main issue is that uh, any, any proposal for the future or any, any kind of lifestyle that uh, can uh, somehow support uh, the life of the island and all the islanders together needs a kind of partnership between all of these uh, inhabitants and also between these inhabitants and that island together or any piece of land as well. And then the third issue is uh, we, we try to address the main pathology that today uh, we are facing uh, in the island of Cyprus and but not only in the island of the Cyprus but in the most part of the world uh, which is the actually the, the relation of the human uh, with, with the other humans and with, with the nature as well and with the planet Earth and the other living beings as well. And this is exactly what needs to be restored first. So, so this, this yeah, project is trying to address these, these issues. So as an example, uh, to start the discussion and explain actually our approach to, to these issues, I would... Uh, I would like to start with the two concepts, two uh, concepts that you know defines our philosophical approaches to the to the redesigning or re-inhabiting this this planet. Uh, one of them is the mechanistic approach, and the, the other one is the organic approach. And uh, I myself, I have a great interest in medicine and the way that medicine is evolved during the history of human being and human approach to health. So 
In the right side, you see an, uh, an image that shows our two different approaches. One of them is the organic approach. And the second one is the mechanistic approach to human body and to the concept of the health. And it, it can be a very, very good example of actually all our approaches to other things, including planning, including politics, including ecology, including many, many other economy and many, many other uh, sciences and disciplines as well. So as you can see in the right hand, you see a, a, an understanding of body as a garden we have the best example for this in the Chinese acupuncture, so which, which tries to heal the body by healing not only the body, but also the harmony between the body, the community and the, the land uh, together, the environment together. So the, the, it sees all of these as a, as a whole, as a holistic system and helps for, for a, the Chinese traditional medicine is having this harmony between all of these. And it is impossible, as it is impossible in, in the Western medicine as well, you cannot say if, if one organ of a person, if a kidney of a person is has a problem, you cannot say that that person is healthy, only the kidney has a problem. So the same approach is when even one person in society is, is not healthy, is not in harmony. So we cannot say that that community is healthy. You cannot say that that environment is healthy. So the same approach is there and it's a kind of holistic approach that you know, to have a healthy condition, you need to have a healthy environment. You need to have a healthy community. You need to have healthy relations between the community and between the community and the environment as well. But the other approach is a very mechanistic approach. It sees human body as a kind of machine that you know, has different pieces and any piece is broken, you just repair that piece and that's it. So, uh, I mean, in, in, in the same family, one person can be uh, unhealthy and the others can be healthy. Or even, even when a piece of your body is unhealthy, is not really that much matter. So there is an issue that human is, is in a war continuously with nature, including bacteria, including germs, including everything, viruses. And uh, the aim of this mechanistic approach is just to to win this war, you know, so to, to, to again occupy all the nature and establish the territory of uh, human, which is, which is definitely a very wrong approach and very limited approach. So in the past, uh, it was in 2018 that uh, I started a research about the island of Manhattan and how, how actually Manhattan was shaped and uh, inhabited but by different inhabitants. And uh, the result of this research is recently published uh, with the title of Urbanization as Taxidermy, Manhattanization of Manhattan, and it is now accessible. So in this, in this article, especially in the beginning, I looked at after the uh, ice age, when the first mammals arrived in the island, and these were some of those were beavers, how, how they were inhabited in the uh, in the island of Manhattan, and I just realized that you know uh, beavers, the way that they are inhabiting, the way that they are building their dams, their dams are temporal, so it is it is there for a for a while, and as you see in the image above. They are leaking always, so they act as a filter. So they they filter basically the water, and the topsoil that contains in the water coming from the uh, top hills in the upstate New York is somehow filtered there, and so basically it is fertilizing the island soil. And after a while, this this dam is broken, and the fertile soil is remaining there. And this is a great opportunity to, for the reforestation of that area. And uh, the, the forest, forests of Manhattan are uh, strongly dependent to these beaver's practices. So basically, you know, the forests of Manhattan and beaver's dams and beaver's inhabitations, all of these are part of a very holistic uh, all together, uh, practices together. So we, can, we couldn't have 
forests without beavers, and we couldn't have beavers without forests. So these are all part of the whole system. And I also looked at the earlier inhabitants, human inhabitants of Manhattan, and those were, were Lenape uh, tribes. And I realized just that, you know, they, they were also living very temporally in, in the forests of Manhattan. So usually three seasons in Manhattan and one, one season in Bronx, uh, in the north part of uh, New York. And then in, even in that three seasons that they were uh, living in Manhattan, they were building some kind of village that were uh, there only for 15 to 20 years. And after 15 to 20 years, they were just moving somewhere else. And the way that they were inhabited in that place was very, very similar to, to the practice of inhabitation of beavers. That was a very holistic approach. And they, they were just moving because they realized that, you know, if they stay long, long time there, they, they, they will have a very huge environmental impact. And uh, they, they, they needed to move and let the land to rehabilitate itself and the forest uh, grow again. So this was also very, very, very interesting, uh, yeah, interesting way of inhabitation in partnership between humans, uh, other beings, and the land. However, uh, in in 2015, uh, very, very parallel with the establishment of the Urban Design Studio, uh, I started seeking. Uh, and exploring the opportunities that how, how architecture and planning can contribute to the issue of Cyprus negotiations. And uh, here in the right side, you see some of the articles that I wrote for the Cyprus Mail, and I tried to have a look of uh, how rescaling of the Cyprus talks from a very uh, top-down, centralist, and a kind of 19th century, you know, approach to, to all the topics, to more up-to-date and bottom-up and, you know, diversified practices, uh, how it is possible. So that was an article with the title of Rescaling of the Cyprus Talks. And then the other article was uh, mainly looking at the buffer zone in Cyprus as a great opportunity because, uh, as, as you all know, you know, in Cyprus, we have a buffer zone, it's kind of under the control of the United Nations, but it is the only place that all inhabitants on Cyprus, all human inhabitants on the Cyprus, on the land, can basically meet there. Any other place in Cyprus doesn't have that quality because basically some refugees and some other nationals living in the south cannot, or and even some of the uh, citizens of Cyprus, they don't want, and uh, they have some ideological issues of passing to the north. So, but, but they can come to the buffer zone and many, many of the inhabitants of the North Cyprus who don't have the citizenship of European Union, they cannot pass to the south. So the only place to meet is the buffer zone. And, and uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I just realized that it's a great opportunity to have buffer zone. So why not extend buffer zone more and more to, to somehow uh, to have this uh, quality in the most part of the island. So this was the kind of emerging uh, steps of this, 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 this work. So I just check my time, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, following this, you know, I, I, I looked at the ongoing, you know, uh, studied, you know, what happened in the last it was 51 years that time, but now it is 57 years of Cyprus negotiations. And uh, it was very interesting for me that, you know, I mean, even we are in the 21st century and most of the actors involved in the Cyprus negotiations or activism part of it or academic part of it are very progressive people, but still most of the language and, you know, uh, tools they use in this type of negotiations belong to the 19th century. So first of all, uh, race and ethnic issues are the major issues in, in these talks. So all the maps are based on two, you know, abstract 
character that I have never seen these two person. So one of them is a Greek Cypriot character who is uh, Orthodox Christian and you know uh, has, has some kind of ideologies and the other character is pure Turkish Cypriot character. So everything in these, these negotiations is just to understand how to can how they can bring these two people together. These people that, uh, I mean, in the regular time they cannot come together, but but these these plans are somehow solving this problem and bring them together. But of course, Ireland is more diverse of these two abstract characters. So we have uh, many diverse kind of people, ideas, thoughts, and and yeah, I mean. When, when you name somebody as with, with the ethnic uh, background and you know with the ethnic identity you you create to you start creating that identity as well but probably there are yeah better better ways of thinking about people at least more diverse ways of thinking about people than looking only at their identities and even as I said you know talking to many Greek Cypriots, yeah, I don't use this, these two <laughs> concepts. Many, many people in the both side of Ireland, I, I realize that, you know, people can identify themselves very differently than Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot, even now under this, this education that this uh, 19th century concepts are somehow uh, proposing to the people, which needs definitely to be changed. Uh, but also in addition to that, uh, there is another very, very interesting topic that is discussed and that's private property. And for many people, that is the main reason that uh, the main, main, main obstacle of Cyprus, uh, let's say peace process, uh, because a huge you know, immigration happened and lands left in the South and in the North and some new people came and lived there. And there is a, a very multi, kind of layered, multi-layered property ownership systems, uh, Ottoman one, British one, and then the, the Cyprus Republic one, and then the, the, uh, in the North part, especially the Turkish uh, de facto states uh, identification of property. So, so there are some lands that, you know, in different uh, property, systems during the history was titled to different people. So there are kind of multi-layered property ownerships. But however, the, the Cyprus negotiations is only focused on private property ownership as the only way of solving the problem. And is just trying to, to say that only one person exclusively can have the right of ownership of land and nobody else can have any, any right to access to it, to use it, to, to uh, develop it or to live in it, which is also very a kind of 19th century understanding of uh, property right. And we all know that today we have more diverse and more hybrid ways of looking at the property ownerships and uh, definitely, you know, these, these would be very, very helpful in solving many problems in Cyprus. What is the, uh, or, or the issue of border and the issue of bicommunal or two state solutions, all of them are based on having two, two governments and you know, two ethnic groups, ethnic majorities. And, and I mean, everything goes on this idea of two. And then there is a border between them and there must be a territory and uh, decide, decision on these borders and all of this, which, which yeah, I, 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 I always believe that, you know, I don't believe on any of these concepts and uh, why, why I, I have to be stopped uh, in, in these concepts and cannot uh, think about some other ways of recognizing uh, the solutions or finding the solutions for this this problem. So this was the start point of this this project, let's say. So some uh, visualizations of the existing conditions. So uh, at the moment, 
You know, we have some de facto situation uh, in the last uh, four and a half decades. And this is uh, two governments that uh, both of them are acting as a kind of central and decentralized system of, uh, you know, political uh, power. And the, the solution that is somehow desired is just having uh, an umbrella state that connects these, these two decentralized systems together and make another decentralized system. But uh, yeah, I, I learned from Bookchin and many other urban urbanists, let's say, that it's not the best way of uh, managing your society of having centralized or decentralized systems. And probably the distributed systems will be more helpful in creating more self-sufficient, self-organizing, supporting direct democracy, supporting bottom-up processes, and also supporting the process of integration of people to their land, to their village, to their environment, and to all the other uh, issues that are more, let's say, uh, valuable in, in the 21st century's progressive uh, thoughts. So based on all of these, very, very initially, we thought that, okay, then, I mean, the, the, the village of, if we look at the historical village on Cyprus, the existing one and the historical one, so the best way of creating the future Cyprus is creating an integrated distributed system in the Cyprus as, as a political uh, way of ruling Cyprus, that each of these dots will be a self-sufficient, self-organizing uh, communal you know, uh, gathering areas. And basically the collaborations between these, these areas that create the collaboration between all the people in the island. So the best examples for these are always a kind of indigenous people's practices during the history. So if you look at Australia and the way that Aboriginal, you know, uh, tribes, they, they were uh, leaving and collaborating and they were, they were developing partnerships with each other and also with the lands, this, this can be used as a, as a best example. Very interestingly, in my own uh, life experience while I was in Cyprus, I saw many, many people uh, in their over 70s that still they have some kind of indigenous knowledge. So when, when you start trekking on the mountains with them, they know each, each herb, they know each uh, living being that they see, they, they call them with different names and they, they know how to use them, how to behave with them, how, how to develop their relations with, the, with them. But the younger generations, the ones probably after 74, they don't have this knowledge. So that's a, that's a kind of, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's pity that, you know, this, this generation, they are now over 70 and it is very important that they transfer this knowledge of indigenous life to the new generation. So still there are some roots of indigenous knowledge and that this, these people are carrying and, and, and we believe that you know, this uh, re-indigenization is the best way of solving Cyprus issues. Uh, so basically, I mean, to, to, to have this vision, uh, I mean, having this vision probably will, will open many opportunities of how to negotiate, what, what kind of topics to, to negotiate, what kind of timeline to have for the negotiations and what, what kind of steps to, to define, to reach to this uh, vision in the future. And this, this can be a very, very start point uh, of developing some kind of common interests. So there are very, very interesting examples actually uh, happening in Cyprus. So, so I mean, one, one very interesting one is about uh, wine yards and uh, wine production that the uh, inhabitants of 
the village from all different communities, they returned to their village and started growing the, the same uh, grapes that, you know, that, that the, the, the usage of these grapes from different parts of the village and combination of them were giving a very, very interesting taste to the wine of that uh, village uh, before 74, that, you know, by, by the immigration of uh, some of these people and not using some parts of the grapes from some parts of the village, the, the taste was changed. But again, that change, that taste was regenerated after uh, this return of the uh, old inhabitants and their collaboration. So this kind of very small steps can, can be the best regenerative practices to build up the future of the Cyprus and reestablish the relations between communities and between communities and their land and between communities, their land and the other inhabitants and looking progressively to the future of uh, Cyprus. So uh, this, this is a painting that my two years old son Ege drew last week. Uh, and you know, he was asked in the nursery to, to draw uh, English uh, flag and he was guided to, to, to how to do it, but, but because he's two years old, he's not well educated uh, by the modern human yet. So the way that he put the reds and whites and the way that he mixed these of these together is not following the same uh, mechanistic uh, way that we are thinking. So he's looking at the English flag, he's guided, but the way that he's translating it to his own painting is uh, is yeah something different than what we have. So uh, again, part of my work in 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 the U.S. was related to uh, some religious, uh, sorry, some indigenous communities and this Polynesian stick charts and maps that instead of uh, our you know modern uh, mechanistic understanding that you know all our maps are two dimensional and symbolically represent the location of the things and ignores all the other things. These, these maps are only representing the relations between the patterns more than uh, only the locations. So these are, these are kind of uh, maps developed by Polynesian, uh, ma mainly Marshall Island uh, Islanders and uh, shows the relationship between different patterns that happen in the in the nature, including waves, including winds, including uh, the coldness and you know temperature of uh, the uh, water and and many other patterns in there, and also seasons and, and and many other things. So it's a very kind of interactive, holistic, and organic way of mapping the the uh, yeah the the areas. And I think that is one of the main problems. So when, when we start, you know, mapping everything with these plans, with these, you know, kind of uh, two dimensional mechanistic tools that we have in the planning, the result is always the same. The result always comes to this very mechanistic solution. So we need to change our even language, uh, our tools of showing it. And this is, this is one of the other other things that uh, in the urban design studio, we are trying to explore it. And as part of this explore, exploration, we, we looked at actually miniatures, the Eastern miniatures. So in the left hand, you see one of the old examples of miniatures that you can re represent the interior space, exterior space, wildlife, the time, more importantly, the time in these images. So many things in different times, in different uh, parts, in different locations can happen in the same place and represented there. And very importantly, all of the issue is that the painter will remove himself from the scene. And that's a that's very, very amazing kind of approach. And we, we published our uh, exploration and research in, in one article with the name of miniature as a way of representation in design studio. 
uh, and we did some practices with some of our design studio students as, as one of the potential uh, possibilities of uh, creating new languages that we can use it. So why we want this new language is that the main reason is, you know, we don't want a top down solution. We don't want two person come in a closed room, come together and decide about the future of one island. We want everybody, all the generations, future generations in a very transgenerational way they start building their future by themselves. They, they start deciding about it. They, they participate, they be part of it. And, and it is only possible by creating the better communication that makes it possible that you know, this practice becomes more kind of participatory, transgenerational, and also representing the time, the change, the transition, because nothing happens in, in, in a sudden, you know, it needs change, it needs adaptation, it needs adjustment, it needs design and design and design. Anything is designed is nest, any system that is designed is nested in other systems. So, so these, these all needs to be seen at the same time. So uh, for that, you know, we, we need to just have a look again on uh, what we have. The first, you know, starting point is to, to understand, you know, the island in itself. So when we look at the island, even this is, this is a very simple satellite picture of the island, you see that, you know, we don't see this, that very well-defined way that it is in the uh, uh, flag of Cyprus, you know, very, very well-defined island as a geographical, you know, borders. Uh, but it is it is a very fluid island because you know it's, it's, this is this is actually a mount in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea and it is it is not the only mount there are other mounts there are there are pieces of this under the sea that we don't see it and when the sea level changes so that the shape of the island is changing and the sea and the island and everything on it are part of a whole system and and the the other uh, mounts and regions and basins around it, they're all part of the same thing. Anything under, under it, anything about it, they're all uh, part of each other. So we need to, to rethink about this, this concept. And then when we are speaking about the island, we are speaking about different qualities in the island. We have areas in the island that receive, uh, they are more drought and they, we have areas in the island that they receive more rain and there is, there is no border between these, but there is a transition that passes between them and that, that makes life in some parts very different uh, with the life on the other part. If you look at the temperature, the, again, you see that, that the same transition, that the same fluidity, that the same, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, very, very smooth change in different parts and very diversity of qualities that you have that needs a kind of recognition. And uh, if you look at the rivers and streams on the island, you see the continuity. You see that all parts of the island are uh, connected to each other and are actually part of a very big system as it is in our body, so as the veins on our, on our body. So it is impossible you decide to, to, I mean, to give the ruling of your head and shoulders to, to one another brain and your foot and hands to another brain. So this, is, this, this needs a very holistic way of uh, looking at it, including all of these, these items together. And then uh, what it is very important is that from the, uh, inhabitants of the island, including the trees, plants, other wildlife, animals, and you know, insects, and you know, all birds and all the other, either immigrating and migrating or the native ones that are natives of this Cyprus, they are very well interconnected to each other and interconnected to the life of the island, and they are in danger, endangered now because of the rapid urbanization, especially after 74. So we need, we need to think about all of these and we, we need to develop some uh, transitional temporal strategies to somehow restore 
uh, these relations uh, immediately. And when again we look at the islands characteristic, we see this uh, bioregional. Yeah, I need to <laughs> run. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, using all these principles, what what we want to uh, basically propose as a proposal for for a research for a uh, future research and development of some ideas to progressively rethink about the vision of future of Cyprus is uh, to have a kind of indigenized uh, self-organizing vision for the Cyprus uh, island that you know uh, all these historical villages with their own characteristics they can uh, have a vision of regeneration and people of these villages the indigenous knowledge related to these relays can be regenerated, can be uh, recreated and can be transferred to the new uh, inhabitants. And then trying to find out some more fluid systems of property ownership, of collaborations between relays, of you know, uh, all, all the human relations, even the way that we identify people, even the way that we we uh, somehow uh, name them uh, can be can be re re reconsidered and can be developed as a kind of multi-dimensional, multi-layered, and multi-scalar ways. So uh, all of these needs to be developed uh, by different generations and from from the bottom up. And the only thing that we can do is. Uh, collaboration between biologists, between uh, planners, between political scientists, between philosophers, between legal, you know, uh, scientists of coming together and defining the best ways of uh, creating the future visions. Even just as an example, very simple uh, property issue, Cyprus, it's a small island and it's a very, very important opportunity for humans history if we can do, develop something for cyprus this can be a pilot for maybe the other parts of the world as well it would be very very difficult to do it for the uk but the the opportunity in cyprus the possibility there is that they already want to re-establish a new system there and that's that gives us a very great opportunity and the new system that they even are thinking uh, is considering a big shift of life between now and the future that they are visioning. So that, that, that's also another opportunity that uh, we can do it in a better, better way. So just uh, some, some last things about it is, you know, if you look at this island now, everything in, is used and consumed in the island comes from the other parts of the world. So it's island is consuming, the other country's resources while is not uh, is not enable is not able to to create its own food its own uh, shelter needs its own you know uh, even uh, very very basic and simple needs so we need to rethink about all of these uh, and while envisioning the future of Cyprus to create a future that each village will have its own characteristics, but everything on, on it uh, can be based on these collaborations, these relations. So what we need to design is redesigning these, these relations and the relations between people, how we can again build these communities of indigenous people and the communities and their relations with the other beings and the planet Earth. So I want to stop here and hopefully <laughs> uh, we can have the chance to discuss more in the remaining time. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, uh, Hussein. If you can uh, unshare your screen, so yeah. Um, thank you very much for an inspiring and I would say even radical uh, 
ideas that you've shared with us. We have some, some questions and comments. Uh, and then if there will be enough time, maybe I have some questions uh, because, you know, somehow, you know, I can identify with your ideas while on the other hand is someone who is coming from a very contested territory such as Israel-Palestine. I'm trying to take your ideas back home and I feel very uncomfortable with some of them. So uh, if you want to open the Q&A box uh, or do you want me to read it for you? What would you prefer, Hussein? I'm trying to read them, but yeah, if, if you can- Okay, so we have, we have Elkon uh, who said, very great to look at things this way. Great. <laughs> and we have Louise, one of uh, HUD students who is asking, in terms of integrated planning of Nicosia through natural holistic networks, how do you think lessons could be learned taken from the city's integrated sewage network? Could this be done for other infrastructures across the island, such as transport? <laughs> yeah, uh, a bit difficult question because, yeah, I mean, any collaboration definitely between these two parts is great, but recognition, what, what I, actually what I want to emphasize on it is the great potential in Cyprus that is laying down between people other than between governments. So this sewage system or transportation, this kind of high, you know, political strategies, these are the ones that needs money, needs, you know, power, needs government. And I mean, these three words are not my favorite words, basically government, money, you know, investment <laughs> so so i have other more favorite words like people like the regions like you know the the uh, activists i mean the way that they want to do that i think i think we need i mean 57 years we did we we practiced in in cyprus in palestine in many other parts of the world the way that governments can come together and establish something i don't say that this is this is uh, helpless, but I think that it needs a bit of uh, diversification of approach. But I, I, I'm just one trying to emphasize on, on the other potential that is laying down in, in the grassroots that uh, is there that uh, designers can, can involve and can develop it. So in my, in any piece of land in, in, this, in Cyprus, which belongs due to different legal systems to different people, can be redesigned in a way that different owners can, can feel happy. So you can, you can develop some, some kind of approaches that will, will solve problems from the bottom of, you know, uh, let's say, yeah, approach. So, uh, yeah, the sewage system in itself is a problematic system. So, uh, sewage system, uh, I mean, yeah, it is not at all ecological sewage system because in Ireland that we have the lack of water, basically you pollute water, which you cannot pollute it because it is, it is very important, you know, material for life that you don't you really need it and so all the system is based on the acceptance that polluting water is okay but now the issue is how to clean the water i think all the strategies must reconsider in a way that it can be the best way of approaching and that is to not pollute the water so i'm looking for for some strategies that communities can develop as pilots to not pollute water as the best uh, examples for, for the other strategies as well. Thank you. Uh, we'll have to be quick with answers because there are several questions. Sorry. And I'm sorry that I picked the last question by Andreas. Uh, the reason is that I'm very interested in, in your answer to this question. Thanks for this talk. Uh, you mentioned uh, fluid systems of property ownership 
It sounds amazing and very exciting for further research. Can you please elaborate on this idea? Also, do you focus on Cyprus as it may be a good case to test certain ideas for new systems because it is geographically isolated to a certain extent? Yeah, a very short answer will be something, for example, community land trust that, you know, today's planning uh, literature using it a lot. Uh, something, I mean, that is that's very recent concept for the fluid property ownership systems. Uh, but of course, I'm, I'm more for indigenous way of thinking of land. I mean, you cannot own any land, of course. It is, I mean, it, in my mind, I cannot understand it that somebody can own a land or a government can own a land or, you know, a country can own a land. It's not possible. But, uh, you know, it is, it is the way of, I mean, in Lefebvrean way, it is the way of appropriation. The way that we live on the land, the way that you develop your relation with the land. And that is, uh, I mean, terraforming the land. This is, this is our duty to terraform the land and pass it to the future generations. And that is, uh, I mean, we, we have in, in human history, I mean, especially before the agri agrarian societies and indigenous and in indigenous societies, we have many diverse way of doing it. But even in the agrarian societies, if you look at even in the Middle East, the way that we are using the land, we are, uh, the, the language that we are using for it is also a very regenerative one. Just one example from my own country. I mean, the country that I bought. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, in Iran, it is called Abadi, which means terraforming. And that, that is the way that, you know, because most of the cities and villages are in the middle of desert. So it, you cannot even live there. What you need to do is needs, needs to terraform it. You needs to find the best way of replant it to create an environment that the birds and the other beings come there and live there with you. That you can you can have uh, a sustainable life for the future generations. And yeah, as I said, the new forms in, in especially in New York City, there is a great activism on these new forms of land ownership based on communities and uh, transgenerational ones. Mm -hmm. And yes, this can be a very good example for the other geographies as well. Thank you, uh, Alice. Uh, thanks for uh, the inspiring presentation. The multi-communal visioning is fascinating, but what kind of governance structure should be put in place to support such vision? Also, in light of the difficulties in implementing bicommunal cooperation initiatives. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, about the type of governance. So I am for uh, what Bookchin is calling it uh, municipalitanism. And uh, it is basically the direct democracy in the uh, communities and in the municipal level. But uh, part of the idea that we had was uh, basically that there will be a representation of each village in, in Nicosia in the future to, to be able to have those uh, common issues about Cyprus to be discussed and to be decided. And that is uh, a mimicry from Aboriginal tribes. So the way that Aboriginal tribes comes together and have their own great Congress to decide about issues about Australia is a very good example of governance for the future of Cyprus. And it is very easy to build it. And now in, in some parts of the world, it is practice and it is well, well practiced and yeah, well resulted. And now we have a very tricky question from Shai, again, a HUD student. How do we balance between long-term planning for built environment incorporating the ideas you suggested and the short-term requirements now? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, Professor Terry Irvine and uh, Gideon Kosov, there are two, two references. Uh, they are in the Carnegie Mellon University and they developed a field that is called transition design. 
And this transition design is a, is a new approach to design that it claims that the way that you, you need to do this is first you create the vision for the future of that community. And uh, this vision is the kind of ideal that we want to move towards that. And then with the community and also, I mean, the community in itself do kind of transition plans that, you know, it is adjustable always and, you know, temporal uh, to reach to that, to that vision. And, you know, uh, basically, yeah, this is, this is the way to do that. So, uh, and yeah, I promise to give short answers. Thank you. We have another uh, comment on the chat from Sophie. If the people create their own happiness in a country or a village, they are more likely to integrate with each other. So I think this is a very important comment. And I have maybe a final question or, yeah, I think it's a question and I don't know if we'll have time to discuss it, but I think that your uh, proposal, um, I, I look at it more as a methodological approach towards planning in contested territories. And I think that one of the main issues that we face in these areas is very much, you know, the presence of power in different forms. And I think one of the main forms is, you know, the way in which our identity is constructed, our ethnic, our national identity in this uh, kind of, of areas. And I was wondering to what extent, you know, you've mentioned 19th century. I think we live since the 18th century with the whole idea of nationalism, the nation state, and to what extent we can really undo our identities. Uh, people are killing each other because of their identity attached to a territory. And I was wondering, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a very sensitive issue that I didn't hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, it is, it is a very great point, actually. But the, the problem, I mean, the problem with this is, in Cyprus is everything is a bit dif different, let's say. Because, I mean, this thesis and this, this methodological approach is not something that tomorrow we can just go to the presidents and community leaders and tell them, okay, start apply this one and stop thinking about 19th century or as you said, 18th century, you know, kind of mindset. But a great intellectual uh, capacity that we have in Cyprus in both sides and in the activists of this gives this hope that, you know, we can open this kind of discussions. What is always for me kind of, uh, you know, the issue of concern is, okay, it, theoretically, when with these intellectual people, we are coming together, we are talking about very progressive, you know, ideas about the world, about the future of planet, about, you know, but when we come to the issue of Cyprus, we are still fighting for nation state, federal Cyprus, bicommunality, you know, and all of this. So I think everything, you know, so very, very simple uh, thing that always we are talking about it. Any rapid change is not desirable. I think we need, I mean, imagine how we came to this point in 21st century. It took 200, 250 years. So we don't need to really rush up and say that, okay, in 2025, we are going to have a Cyprus that everybody will go to their local communities and integrate with their land. So this is not, the, this is not what probably we want to have as a vision, but the vision is to build up this process and we can build up this process as it was in 18th century, as it was in 16th century, the roots of this look, this modern look, this mechanistic root it started in the universities, it started between intellectual people. I think these discussions, these methodological discussions needs to be developed in between the intellectuals, between the activists and create some potentials for the future development of these ideas. Okay, I think that we will have to finish quite soon, but uh, I would like, first of all, to thank you, Hossein, for your wonderful presentation and to uh, our audience. But a special thanks to Alex and Anud 
uh, who are supporting and helping, uh, uh, you know, the, this, the, you know, uh, our ability to to have this event. So thank you very much, Anud and Alex. Thank you. And I just wanted to mention that uh, this uh, webinar is recorded, and you will be able to access it. Uh, I guess it will be in the DPU uh, website and maybe YouTube. So thank you very, very much. It was a great pleasure. Bye. I, I want also to thank all of you. And I just want to call everybody that have some ideas. Please send us some emails. So we would be very happy to develop this idea together and uh, explore ways of uh, reaching more people. Yeah, as said already, it's just the beginning of a conversation, Hussein. <laughs> thank you, Haim. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, Alex. Thanks a lot. Bye.